What's up guys, Dan here for bladereviews.com and today I've got a very nice knife to share with you. Of course what I've got here is a Spyderco Bob Lum Chinese Folder and man it's a special knife. Uh, not only is this a first edition knife, it's the first run, they've made this knife in a number of different colors and sizes and configurations. This is the original dark green Lum Chinese folder, but this is actually one of the, the first production models and is actually serialized as part of Spider Co's Collectors Club. So I'm extremely excited to share this knife with you. It's very special and uh, yeah, let's just uh, let's get into it and, and do our little review here. So to start things off, the Lum Chinese folder, at least the regular version, I know they also make a large version, but the regular version has an overall length of 7 and 3 16 inches. It's got a 3 uh, 3 and 5 30 seconds inch long blade and it weighs a mere 2.8 ounces so this is a, a nice lightweight knife really this particular model is a collectible but it would make a nice light use EDC knife or perhaps a gentleman's folder so let's uh, let's compare this Lum Chinese with a couple other offerings here first up I've got a a Lum Tanto another Spider Co and a very nice Interesting offering from Spyderco, also designed by the late Bob Lum. And as you can see, the uh, the Lum Chinese there is, is much smaller, but I've got my trusty Sage 1 here, and that might give you a, a better idea as, as to what to expect in terms of size at least. So it's a good size for EDC, but it's not going to be as robust as this this Sage, and I think you'll see that as we uh, as we go through the review. So let's start things off by taking a look at the blade here. And what we've got is a really nice, graceful, leaf-shaped blade. Really nice. It's kind of a reflective satin finish, and it's already starting to pick up my camera on here, so uh, you're going to have to kind of excuse me for that. It's just a very reflective, but a very nice, wide blade. It's got a thin, full flat grind, so you've, you're looking at actually 3 millimeter thick blade stock, which has been fully flat ground, leaving you with a very thin and capable knife. This is actually a very nice slicer, although I can't say I've sliced too much stuff with it, but uh, very, very effective at slicing. There's actually a, a small, a very thin swedge running across the top there, and it, uh, you know, the tip is nothing remarkable. This isn't really designed for penetration, although I guess it, it could if if you you know if you needed to rip through a package or something. So very nice blade shape, very elegant. It's been given that nice polish. The steel on this knife is VG10 and that's a Japanese stainless steel and this is indeed a Japanese made spider co so made in Seki City and I happen to like VG10 a lot. I think it's a great idea for a nice thinly ground knife like this because VG10 can get so sharp and you know it's just going to be a phenomenal slicer, easy to sharpen and rust and corrosion resistant. I think most of you guys know what VG10 is all about but at this point. So it's a very nice blade shape. I like the steel and I happen to really like this handle here. It's a nice rich dark green color. Uh, really unique. There's nothing in my collection quite like it, so this is just a very refreshing uh, and sort of uh, mesmerizing, almost an emerald green, and I'm a big fan of it. What you've got here are full aluminum handle slabs, and uh, I guess you know calling them slabs is maybe a bit of a misnomer. They're they're really quite lightweight with an overall weight there of under three ounces. So, but they're full full aluminum. You've got a a stainless steel liner on this one side, and then you've got a G10 backspacer. Now they've made this knife in a couple different handle materials. I know they've uh, got a G10 version, carbon fiber, titanium. But the original here is the aluminum, and so you've got aluminum. You've got this full backspacer, everything is screwed together, and then it's been given what's called an Allmite coating. So that's what this green thing is. It's a it's a green coating. Uh, Allmite is, is, from my research, it's similar to anodizing, and it's just another way to finish aluminum. So it's very, very nice. I'm not sure how durable it is, because I'll be honest with you guys, I really haven't carried this one, but uh, it is pretty, so we'll give it that. In hand, the uh, Lum Chinese folder here is quite comfortable, actually. You notice it's got that 
beautiful curve to it, and it does fit in the hand quite naturally. It, at first, I thought that it wouldn't be the most functional design because there really aren't any uh, outstanding ergonomic features, but it's actually quite comfortable. Now, there isn't any jimping uh, on that thumb ramp, and there's no real exaggerated finger choil or anything like that, and the All Might is actually uh, kind of a smooth and some people have described it as slippery. I guess it'd be kind of slippery. Uh, yeah, it's a fairly slippery handle. So, would this knife perform as well for day-to-day -day use as, say, that Sage 1 with these exaggerated ergonomics and lightly textured handles? No, I, I don't think so. But still, you know, if you're, if you're viewing this as a collectible or a gentleman's folder or a very light-duty EDC knife, then I, I think it'll be satisfactory. But this certainly isn't a knife that you're going to want to, uh, I don't know, take to war or something like that. It's, it's definitely not designed for that. They've kind of put the, uh, the looks ahead of the ergonomics at least, although I do think it's quite capable and I've no doubt that this could cut and cut quite well. So there you have it for the ergonomics. Let's take a closer look at that pocket clip which is kind of a no frills pocket clip here. It's got this sort of interesting clip shape there, at least the part that bolts onto the handle and it is reversible right side only so you've got options of tip up tip down right side carry and it's it seems to be pretty pretty basic pretty functional though there's a lot of Spyderco clips like this and they all have good retention they're easy enough to withdraw from the pocket it's not going to be moving around and a knife like this is not going to tear up your pants or anything like that so you know it's a good clip not the deepest carry when you're going tip down but if you were to swap it to uh, tip up it would ride a little bit deeper so I think it's it's totally adequate here for what we're looking at. Deployment is accomplished via a 13 millimeter thumb hole, easily accessible on either side of the knife. And you can see that the knife opens smoothly and it's got this nice crisp lockup. I really like that. You know, it's not the fastest deployment or anything like that, but it's just it's it's purposeful and it's kind of nice uh, just listening to it. It's very satisfying for some reason, so I, I do enjoy it a lot. What you've got here is a liner lock, kind of a thin one, and I know that's something of a complaint for some people. For me, with the intended use here, not really a big deal. It's very sturdy. You've got a, a full engagement here, kind of engages in the middle of the tang, so... You know, there's still plenty of room for this thing to uh, to wear in if you were to use it, this particular knife. And it's uh, no there's no blade play at all, like I said. So, wrapping things up here, the, the Lum Chinese Folder, I think it's just a beautiful, elegant knife. It's a another great design by the late Bob Lum, and it's uh, there's, there's a good reason for this knife to have... Uh, been in the Spyderco catalog for so long. This this knife was actually made in 2000, so they've been producing the the Lum Chinese folder for 12 years at least uh, at the time of this video. So I think there's good reason for that. It's it's really nice, refined design, an excellent gentleman's folder. If you're looking for all-out utility, if you if you're looking for your next EDC knife that you're gonna carry to the grave, well. The Lum Chinese may not be the most practical option, but it certainly is a beautiful option. And if you do decide to buy one and you want to carry it, well, I might suggest buying two because you never know. This green version has come and gone, and there's been like a blue version, and a, you know, all these versions. They've kind of come and gone throughout the Spider Co. catalog. So if you really like it, you might want to pick up a couple. All right, guys, that's the review. Thank you so much for watching. Again, this is Dan for BladeReviews.com. Please let me know if you have any comments or questions. Always enjoy hearing your feedback. Take care, guys. Be safe, and I'll be back soon with another knife review.